you'd like to stand and worship with us this morning. Uh, we're going to praise our God together. Um, if you would feel comfortable to come down to the altar here or to find a space to worship, we just want to glorify God this morning and to sing praises to him.
that Jesus is our only hope, and he really is, and it's a declaration that I just want to sing together, and there's a part in the bridge where it's, there's hope in the morning, hope in the evening, hope because he is living hope, so this morning, if, if you feel like um, we have flags in the corner, if you'd like to, you know, wave a flag of praise to God, if you'd like to raise a shout of praise, um, just feel free to let the Spirit move in you and move around us this morning. We worship you. Days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, rising higher with power to save with power to save let's sing this out you keep hope alive you keep hope alive from the beginning to end your word never fails you keep hope alive because you are alive Jesus, you are alive. Oh, we praise you, cause you are alive. Death had a stronghold, but your life was stronger. Rose from the grave, rose up from the
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Stop because you are Waymaker, miracle worker, 
something for me come on are there are there some people that you can say the same thing that that you God needed to speak to you today through those songs and you just needed to lay hands on yourself you just needed to speak to yourself I don't know about you but there are times that I just need to speak to myself come on I just need to declare some things to my spirit because we all face this toxicity all around us and I just need to speak to something of the word of God that God is my miracle worker he's my way maker amen and he's gonna make a way and if he's done it in the past he's gonna do it again praise the Lord so, Father, Lord, we lift up a shout of praise. Come on, lift up a shout of praise in this house. We lift up a shout of praise, Lord. 
And we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in and through the people of God. That we come and we lift up a voice of praise to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's life is being radically changed right now because God is coming to speak to you. God is speaking to you right now and He's giving you hope. He's speaking hope right now to you. Receive it in Jesus' name. He is here. His presence is here today. So Father, we thank You. We give You praise. We give You glory. We give You honor. Thank You, Lord, that we get to be Your people that release praise to You. To You. To You, Lord. And we honor you, and we worship you, and we exalt your name. You are a good God. Come on, will you declare that with me? You are a good God. You are a good God. And we exalt your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen, and amen. Will you just greet someone in your own special way? Just let somebody know that you're glad to see them in God's house. Call out their name. It's okay to feel the sound waves with somebody's name. Hallelujah. Deanna and Josh, it's great to see you and your family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Olive, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we want to welcome those that are watching online as well. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and you want us to dismiss the children right now or just wait a little bit? Let, let's, we can wait a little bit. We can wait. So we want to welcome uh, all of our online viewers. Uh, those of you that are in the building, would you just give it up and welcome those that are watching online? Come on, let's let them know. We are honored that you've chosen to watch and to be with us this morning. Let us know if you're making a decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ today. Let us know how we have made an impact through the worship and even the preaching of the word this morning. Let us know how we can be praying for you. And we just want to say welcome and God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to us this morning. Well, uh, the Harbor family continues to grow, and uh, we just want to welcome, I think there's a slide here, for uh, Andy Irene Roseland, and would you give it up and welcome baby Roseland, uh, mom and dad, Chris and Bethany, and uh, little Andy was born Thursday at 1.25 p.m. in the afternoon, and she weighed six pounds, excuse me, seven pounds, Six ounces and six, six point two ounces. So uh, that's a that's we 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 celebrate that and we say, Mom and Dad, uh, we're with you. We're praying for you, and we just declare uh, continued uh, grace and healing and and God's grace upon Mom and Dad and this baby. So we celebrate little baby Andy today. God bless you, Bethany and Chris. And then we also want to let you know that as, as uh, Christmas time is approaching, it is Operation Christmas Child. And those of you that, are, that you know exactly what this is all about, wave at me if you know exactly what this is all about. And this is our opportunity to gather together as a family of God and release gifts to this exciting ministry. So uh, handouts are at the desk. We want to make sure that you get one. Um, please, if you have not already received one, please make sure you get one in the foyer as you leave. There also is a voter's guide in the handout, or excuse me, in the foyer. And uh, there's also a bulletin today that we've got information for you. But uh, please, we need all hands on deck for this Operation Christmas Child. And uh, your donations are due by November 8th. Say November 8th. That's when you need to have it in. So if you have, if you have more questions, please see Heather about that. 
And then I'm excited about something that we're doing for the first time, I believe, at the Harbor Church. And that is we are having a Thanksgiving banquet. How many of you know that uh, Thanksgiving is the month of giving thanks? And we want to give thanks for you. Because 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 says that, that we give thanks to you, always mentioning you in our prayers. And so I want to lead the way as, as the lead pastor of the harbor, along with our staff, our core team, our elder, our council members. We want to say thank you to everyone of you who are a part of the Harbor family. But you have to RSVP. And uh, so that needs to be in um, by, I'm not sure if there is a date, but maybe it's on your, check your mailbox. If you haven't looked in your mailbox yet, there is uh, mail in there, and you've got that RSVP card. You need to fill it out. Put down the number of people that are attending. And uh, the reason we need to know is because we have our very own chef that is doing this meal. And uh, so I'm excited. Uh, this will be the second time. You may not all know this, but Adam Boreen is quite a chef. And he, he's, he's done a remarkable job. And uh, he's already, we've, we've, we've released that gift a couple of months ago to the pastors, the clergy, that is, they gathered here for fellowship. And now we're going to release that gift again to minister. And so every one of us has a gift. And so we're just going to honor that gift of him being a chef. So you want to be here for that banquet, but you got to RSVP. So. Make sure you check your mailbox to get that and get it in by the date. All right? And uh, let's see. I think uh, this is it. And I'm going to ask Dan if you'll come on up. And Dan has, has an announcement that uh, pertains to pastor appreciation. As I mentioned last week, it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and we're going to honor Pastors Brad, Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Reuben, Pastor Don, and Pastor Shirley today. On behalf of the council and the church, I would like to say thank you and that we appreciate you, especially this year, going through the time that we've had with the pandemic where the doors were closed, but the church never was. As you guys went out real fast and adjusted and made it so we could have service online and you kept in communication with everybody to see how everybody is doing. Pastor Brad, I want to thank you, especially for the transition over the past year into your role as a senior pastor and how you have kept everybody and formed a core team and just led everybody through the trials and the times that we've had. And I also want to state, that we appreciate all the pastors of being Christ-like, showing examples of how Christ lives, how he wants us to live. And how we can go out and live our daily lives the best we can, even though we falter. But you show us that no matter what, God still loves us. At this time, I'd like Pastor Reuben and Hannah, if she would like to come up. Heather, Pastor Brad. I'll have Tim come up also, and we'll say a prayer for our pastors that are here. And those that are not. And if the congregation would just stand and extend a hand where you're at, and we'll pray over our pastors. 
Uh, Pastor Jeremy is today is preaching at the Benson Baptist Church, and uh, so uh, please remember to keep him in your prayers. One of the things that I love about this core team is that their gifts are for the greater body of Christ, and I love it when we send out our team to minister to other congregations. And after... After the service, we've got a love offering basket right in the back for our pastors. And then we'll have cake also, and you guys can visit and tell them personally how you appreciate them and what they've done for you. Okay, extend your hands this way. And, uh, you know, the pastors are people just like us, but, but in these hard times, they have to preach hope and peace and love and... Uh, also live it out, and they're doing a very good job of it. So let's pray. Well, Lord, I lift up uh, Reuben and Hannah and Brad, Heather, uh, Jeremy, Don, and Shirley, Lord. I lift them all up to you, Lord God. I, I ask that heaven would just come down to them, Lord God, and fill them up, Lord God. Um, take them beyond what's going on in this world so that they can lead us. I thank you for the job that they have been doing, Lord God. You have used them and blessed them. Lord, as uh, iron sharpens iron, Lord, I pray that they would sharpen each other, Lord God, that they would uh, be encouragement to each other, Lord God, that uh, through that, that they could encourage the congregation, Lord God. So, Lord, just bless them, keep them, use them, Lord God. Fill them up with your spirit. Bring them a spirit of revelation and knowledge, Lord God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you, Harbor family. I just want to thank the, uh, the church council. I want to thank our elders, Tim and Kathy Bradford. I want to thank uh, the core leadership team. Uh, it has been a remarkable year of just how God has met us. And uh, I, I am so thankful. I love every one of you. I tell people that I, I get to pastor the greatest church ever. And I really mean that from the bottom of my heart, that I love every one of you, and I am honored to be your shepherd. And uh, one of the verses, Dan, as you mentioned, the, the pandemic and the COVID-19 that hit us back in March, one of the verses that I just happened to stumble upon, and, and uh, I, I know that, they, that this happens to you all as well, is that scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, from the Passion Translation, and I'm paraphrasing from the Passion Translation, it says, learn creative ways to show your, your appreciation to people. And so uh, uh, I just began to just, Lord, show me how to be creative. And, and, uh, and so you all, you all probably saw Oh, that's a different side of Pastor Brad that we've never seen. And so you just saw some creativity of, of how I, I love to show appreciation and love to stay in connection. I'm telling you that that, that, that uh, uh, COVID-19 did a, did a work in me, a job in me that I did not like. And I don't know about you, but those of you that are extroverts, come on. Those of you that are extroverts, it was hard. It was tough because I need to be around people. Come on, do we have any other extroverts? And I need to be around people. So I, I found creative ways just to be around people. But uh, may we continue to demonstrate the call of God in our lives. And, and uh, so it's been one year that I've been honored to be your senior pastor, and I love it. I love the assignment. I love the calling. And I'm so thankful for the relationships that God is bringing into my life. We, uh, in our Sunday school class, those of you that, that aren't plugged into Sunday school, we do have Sunday school. We do have a children's class. 
uh, on Sundays at 9 a.m., and uh, I've just been sharing my heart, just kind of expounding some things from the Word about the power of relationships, and so I invite you to come and be with us on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, and one of the things that I was sharing with the class this morning is just the importance of the godly relationships that God brings into our life, and I thank the Lord for that. All right, we're going to dismiss the boys and girls for children's ministry, and uh, we are going to begin to look into God's Word this morning, and I thank the Lord for uh, Pastor Jeremy last week that, uh, that, that gave us a new title, a new series title called Wake Up. And uh, how many of you appreciated his message this past uh, Sunday? Yes. Well, I want to continue uh, to, oh, we forgot our tithe and offering. Thank you, Reuben. I appreciate that. All right. Reuben, if you don't mind, you want to just stay right there. And, and uh, Adam, would you come? Would you come and take the basket over here? Let's stand to our feet. And uh, let's... Uh, you are, you are not known for your living. I think this is a, a, a quote by uh, Henry Ford. You're not necessarily known for your living. You're known for your giving. And uh, as we gather every Sunday to bring our tithe into the storehouse, it's an act of our worship. And uh, so let's, let's uh, get ready to just... Uh, release our gift this morning and and say, Jesus, you are Lord over our homes, our finances, our businesses. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for who you are, what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that we get to come into the house of God to release our gifts. We take this very serious. Lord, this is an act of our worship. And through our worship, we're saying, Lord, you are Lord over our pocketbook. You are Lord over our wallet. You are Lord over our checkbook. You're Lord over our finances. You're Lord over our homes. You're Lord over our families. You're Lord over our businesses. You're Lord over our communities. Everything that we set our hands to do will be blessed. And so, Father Lord, as we bring our gift to you, will you receive it? as our act of worship. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Let's uh, get out of our rows and seats and aisles, and let's give to the Lord and put on some good music, and uh, then we're going to get into the word of the Lord this morning. Thank you. You were always on my side. Thank you for your generosity. And uh, Miss Kathy, would you come and take these, please? All right. Well, Heavenly Father, I pray that our hearts will be engaged to you this morning, that our hearts will be properly aligned, and that we will hear what you want to say to us this morning. Open our ears, open our eyes to see what you want to say, to hear what you want to say, and to see the word, to, to engage you this morning, to be properly aligned to you and what you want to do in and through your church. Have your way. Let this word be a seed that goes into the soil of human hearts let it bring forth a harvest that it will not return void. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Well, turn to your neighbor and say, this message will be for you. All right. So we're going to be talking about waking up to righteousness. 
it's time that we wake up to righteousness. And I, I love how Jeremy just gave some different illustrations of how we wake up. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm typically an early morning riser and, and uh, love to just get up early. And, and uh, sometimes I'll have a, a cup of coffee and sometimes I'll have a cup of tea and, and uh, just begin to start my day of just, and before I even get out of the bed, I'm just always just praying, Lord, my day is, belongs to you and I surrender I surrender to you today, not my will, but your will be done. And uh, learn the art of surrender. Learn the art of surrender, and uh, your day will go so much better. And then there's other times that that uh, uh, I I have difficulty waking up, but I am one that has been blessed with an inter internal alarm clock. Whether I have to catch a a flight at 6 a.m. and have to be to the airport at 4 a.m., uh, or whether I've, I've only gotten a couple of hours of sleep. I don't know why. I can set the alarm, but I always will wake up before it goes off, and I'll just turn it off. And so God has blessed me with an in internal alarm clock. But I don't know about you, but there's times that we do need to learn to wake up to certain things. And uh, I'm going to ask you to... Uh, Receive this message with some grace because it may be hard hitting. And uh, I just ask that you will receive it. And I just believe that it's a message that we as a congregation, we as a church, we as the capital C, the church in America need to wake up to. And the scripture that Jeremy gave us last week, and I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. You have it as well right in front of you. Let's. Uh, read this together. Can we stand one more time for the reading of the word that we show honor to God's word this morning? From the Passion Translation, it says, Listen, you lovers of God. Let's read it in unison. Hate evil, for God can keep you from wrong and protect you from the power of wickedness. You may be seated. We have become a nation that loves what God hates and hates what God loves. What do I mean by that? When we find ourselves down a slippery slope of tolerating things that come down the pike, that, that we find ourselves tolerating things that are black and white in God's word, when we understand those things in God's Word, and then we begin to find ourselves being conformed to the culture that is around us, we begin to tolerate. And what we tolerate eventually will control us. So we have found ourselves that we are a culture, we are, we are living in a culture today that loves what God hates and hates what God loves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain that in just, in just as we continue to work through this. So, here, let me just say this. I'm just going to say it right out. You will hear it. That is why my vote for Donald J. Trump is the result of a decision to love God and hate evil. Okay? I'm going to let you hear this a little bit as I work through this. Hear me now. Four more years of Donald Trump will not save America's problems, not even close. Come on. According to the underground church, the underground Chinese church leader who is here in America, this quote, Trump is the only thing that is holding back America from a fall into socialism. So how do we make sense of this, of navigating through these waters? How do we make sense of this narrative that is so divisive in our culture today? To me, it is simple. The government has one role, and the gospel has another role. And we cannot, if we're going to learn to navigate in moving forward, 
I believe the church has to understand, we as believers need to understand the role of those two entities. And while those two roles intersect with each other, they are in many ways distinct. Here's what I mean. The government enforces and enacts laws. The church changes people's hearts. The government does not have the ability to change a human heart. Only the church of Jesus Christ has the ability to change a heart. And I say where the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is preached in churches. Because we have many churches that don't preach the saving gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I will say it. Just kidding. Thank you. She's following the leading of the Holy Spirit. The government cannot change a human heart. John Adams said, and I quote, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any order. And that's where the church, the gospel, comes in. As we preach and live the gospel, we create moral and religious people of whom Adams spoke of. And those people, in turn, look to the government to uphold the values of that constitution. So, we cannot look to the president, we cannot look to the government to do what only the church can and ought and should be doing. We get in trouble when we look to the government to do that. The, the roles are distinctly separate. And it's not that complicated. I'm not looking for me here by heart. I'm not looking to the president or the government to do the work of the church. That would be ludicrous. That, I, I, would, I would be frustrated if, if, if I'm always trying to look to the government to do what we as a harbor family, as a church, should be doing in our community, for the community, and in the community. But I am looking to the church to do the work. But I'm, let me rephrase that. I'm not looking to the president or to the government to do the work of the church, and I'm not looking to the church to do the work of the government. Okay? I'm not looking to the church to do the work of the government or even the president. And so changing government leaders, changing laws is important. But only the church where the gospel is preached preaches so that lives become changed. And the result is we see the gospel expanding. So the church is the agent in the world that changes our values. The government does not have the power or the ability to change the values of people. Only the gospel has the ability to change our values. The, the church is the agent that changes people's perspective. When the gospel comes into alignment, when your heart engages the true gospel, it ought to change your perspective of what you love and what you hate. And hopefully your heart is in, is, in, is in alignment with the principles of God's word and what he says. And what he says are based in the Ten Commandments. And so we find ourselves in this slippery slope of hating what God loves. So only the church is the agent that can change values, change people's perspective, even change people's goals, even changes the standard of living. Now think about that. 
when the gospel came into your life and you fully understood and embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ, your standard of living changed. Why? Because you no longer are a victim, not blaming anything else, but you take ownership for the mess, for the sin, the wrong in your life, and you make a man, you, 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 you turn your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you ask for forgiveness, and according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, 9 and 8, 9 and 10 you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. And as a result of being saved, your life now begins to change because it's an inside job. God, through the gospel, when it is preached, changes our standard of living. And that means that the world changes as the result. So when the church preaches the gospel, when the church preaches the gospel, it sets people free. It releases a message of hope because life and transformation take place. How many of you, your life got changed because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? You are no longer the same person. And now your allegiance is to the church. So the message of hope, life, and transformation is all found when the gospel is preached. And politics cannot do that. The government cannot change a human heart. So let me get back to the role of the government. Every four years in America, we cast a vote for a presidential candidate who best represents the issues that are important to us. Here are some issues that are important to us. You may have others. These, this, is just, this is just a short list. The life of the unborn. Radical LGBTQ activism. Religious freedom. Social anarchy, world tyranny and terrorism, illegal immigration, relations with China, peace in the Middle East. Now, you may be able to have what you value as your issues that you state what your issues are, but for the most part, those are some of the main issues in our nation that we face. And let me just say this. So when I, when I cast my vote on November 3rd for Donald J. Trump, I'm not looking to the president to save the soul of America. Nor should you be looking for your candidate to save the soul of America. I'm not looking for, for that person that I choose to vote for to transform the heart of America. One person cannot transform the heart of America. The heart of America gets transformed through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our churches. But I am looking but I am looking to the president to stand up for the life of the unborn. I am looking to the president of my choice to stand up for religious freedom. I am looking for the president to stand up to social anarchy. I am looking for the president to stand up against world tyranny and terrorism. I am looking to the president to stand for peace in the Middle East. So when... I contrast where Trump or Biden will take us when it comes to these issues of abortion, of socialism, of relations with China, of religious freedom, of LGBTQ activism, of Israel, of other issues. 
Donald J. Trump gets my vote. Hear me now. Given my choices, given the choices that lie between us, I would much prefer a Trump presidency to a Biden presidency, not because Trump is flawless, because he is. But I would rather see Trump in the White House than a Joe Biden. A, a, Biden, a Biden presidency will defund the police, will close down churches, will fire people who don't agree with the LGBTQ agenda, who speak out against it. Churches will be forced to hire gay applicants. Abortion will be exp expanded under state-run and funded Planned Parenthood. They will let socialism kill our economy and lower our standard of living permanently. The state will take your guns. The state will raise your children. America will no longer be a constitutional republic. And the Bill of Rights will be nullified. Forget the America that you knew and prepare to be a client state of globalist. My vote for Trump is just that, a vote. I'm not selling my soul. I'm not making a deal with the devil. And I'm not pledging everything that, that's within me to a political party. I simply am casting a vote. So, I'm not confusing Donald J. Trump or any president with my Savior, and you shouldn't either. Jesus is my Savior, and he gets my heart, my soul, my life, everything. Trump is my president, and he gets my vote. Do you see the difference? And if the person I vote for loses, so be it. Life goes on. Ministry goes on. Loving God and loving my neighbor goes on. I will continue to pastor the harbor. I will continue to, treat, to teach and preach. And hopefully when things settle down, I will continue to travel and take missions trip and take some of you with me to some of the nations like India, like Uganda, like Cuba. I will continue to stand up, stand out, and stand in as long as I have the freedom to do so. So friends, we have to put our anger aside, we have to put our pride aside, and we have to put our false humility aside as we face the most crucial and critical election in our American history. And so I implore you, Harbor family, for the sake of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we as a congregation will be one voice that repudiates socialism that is about to take over our nation. Millions of Christians are watching and waiting for this one last vote that will be a miracle for this nation. And we will be a generation that gets to experience it may be this one last hope. We think, we think people will be remembered for our voices of speaking out. Your voices that speak out will be remembered. That is true. But let me just challenge you. Your silence will be remembered as well. 
Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. If we remain silent, I believe we have betrayed all the men and women who have died to keep this nation free. We will have destroyed the future of our children and our grandchildren. And we will have made it possible for millions of babies to die a horrible death. And we will give an account to God for how we did not stand up against evil where we tolerate, where we begin to become a church that loves what God hates and hates what God loves. May we be a congregation that stands up and wakes up for righteousness. May every one of us be a voice that stands up, stands out, and stands in for righteousness. I've asked uh, three people to come and pray. Excuse me, four people. Uh, Tim and uh, uh, Lori and Eric. That is three. Did, did I get? Come on up here, guys. Did I ask another one? Yes, Jason, thank you. What, I, what I've asked these people to do is to pray for our nation. Would you just stand to your feet, please? We as a congregation stand much like every church in this nation at a crossroad. What will be our voice? that stands up, and it's, it's, the, it's the littlest things, it's the simple things of what we need to stand up for and stand out and stand in. And so would you just be in agreement with in prayer? Just release your own voice, even as they're praying. Just say, Lord, I agree with that. So be it, Lord. We're desperate for God to move in this election. Would you agree with these people as I give them the mic to pray? Lord, I ask that you forgive us of our sin, Lord God. Um, we have turned against you in many ways as a nation and not followed your leading, Lord God, and I repent of that because you say you will come and heal our land. So, Lord God, we are believing that you will heal this nation, Lord God. We give the election to you, Lord God. Um, do a miracle, Lord God. Do a miracle, Lord God. Uh, may, may your kingdom come in our government. And, Lord, uh, may the churches rise up. The, the sleeping church, Lord God, would it wake up? Would your Holy Spirit... Revive us again, Lord God, and bring us back to the, the roots that the, uh, the pilgrims originally came after, Lord God, in seeking you and, and seeking freedom, Lord God. So have your way, Lord God, in this, in this nation. In Jesus' name. that there's an awakening and an eye-opening of the true force of the vision in this country. I pray that there's an awakening of there's an enemy that is trying to destroy us, of a hidden enemy that only comes from the Lord, I just pray that the church has a strength to stand up and stand out yes, and yes. stand in for this country, Lord, that we love and that our ancestors fight for us, that my family fought for I do not want to be behind them, but they sacrifice. Give me strength and give us strength as a country.
Holy Father, we come before you today and ask for healing for our nation, dear Lord. Yes. We ask that you lead our children, dear Lord, lead those who are voting this year. Lead us back into your arms, Lord. I declare a great revival in our country. Yes, yes. I declare that you will awaken the church again, dear Lord, so that we may fall to our knees and follow your ways again, dear Lord. Please, Lord, please save our country, dear Lord. In Jesus' name. Dear Lord, I just thank you, God, that the reason we have this country is because we repented and put our trust towards you, God. That we put on our money in one God that we trust is only you, God. God, I just pray that you take away the idleness of false gods in this world that Jesus is the one and only God and that he came and died on the cross so we could repent and put our trust towards you. And as we did that, Lord, you gave us wisdom, God. You gave us knowledge. You gave us all this wealth that we have nowadays. And other countries look at us and wonder why, God. But it's all you, God. It's nothing we did, God. And I just thank you for Pastor Brad here, God, that he's not a fearful pastor, that he'll talk about politics, God. So I just pray that you will take away that false lie that Satan puts in our head that we're not supposed to talk about church or politics, God. Pray that you give us wisdom and faith like Esther and Joseph and David, God, and Moses, God. All of, all of them were fall, flawed. God, I just pray that you will cause a church to repentance, God, that we'll put our trust back in you, God, that we will go forth, God, and be mighty in your name, Jesus. And I just pray that you'll give us an awakening, God, that we need to fear you, God, that, that we've sinned and fallen short of your, your wisdom, God. And I just pray that we'll love you and serve you, God. Let the Holy Spirit flow down on this country again, God. Great awakening, God. And I just pray that you'll be with us, God. Give us the power, the healing. Just let us be a witness to the world once again, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Lord. If you are free this coming Thursday at 12 o'clock noon, there's a movement of the local Spicer and New London pastors that are gathering at 12 o'clock noon, and we're praying for these upcoming elections and then we'll even be praying after the election and so if you are free uh, we're gathering at 12 o'clock noon at the Hawick uh, Methodist Church and uh, so I invite you uh, to be a part of that we'd love to see some of the Harbor families there and just just uh, interceding and fasting over the noon hour to pray for this nation also, uh, just to let you know that uh, next Sunday, uh, I will not be here. Pastor Jeremy will be in the pulpit, but I, I will be in Washington, D.C. again uh, on Saturday and Sunday attending the uh, As One rally uh, with thousands of others uh, at the, uh, the Washington Monument uh, praying for this nation and uh, uh, praying that God's will will be done. And uh, so I just believe that I am uh, being obedient to what God is speaking to me of, of being a voice that represents uh, our community, representing uh, the Harbor family, representing uh, Candy Ojai County, and representing Minnesota as uh, a gatekeeper in this state that will intercede and be present in Washington, D.C., uh, how many of you know that sometimes uh, gatekeepers, uh, watchmen on the wall, need to be present, and there is an anointing that comes upon you because of proximity. And when you are actually present at something, there is that anointing that comes. And so I covet your prayers. Uh, Wanda and Carrie Schlecht will be uh, also on this trip. And uh, so we covet your prayers as we represent you next weekend in Washington, D.C. Father, I thank you for this family. I thank you, Lord, that you are calling us to be agents of hope, 
agents of hope in the midst of a nation that is divided, in a nation that is divisive, in a nation that seems to be filled with hatred, anger, and pride, even false pride. So, Lord, I pray that we would lay those narratives down and that we would embrace our brothers and sisters in love, in the love of Jesus Christ, and have those hard conversations. Sit where people sit before we speak. I pray, Father Lord, that we will be agents of hope that will, that will be bridges, that would build bridges where there is a divide in our land. Bless our time together. Bless this fellowship. Bless the time that we gather together to just love on one another, appreciate one another, affirm one another. I thank you, Father, for this family. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Thank you, and God bless you.